Many people think that landscape architecture today is about designing nature, composing wonderful gardens, fantastic parks, or nice landscape. But that's not quite true. Why? Well, take a look outside, or if you are outside, take a look around you and try to differentiate between the natural elements you can see outside and the synthetic elements, the man-made elements you can see outside. Try to differentiate and you'll find out it's not so easy to differentiate between these two elements because we're living in a world where these two parts are merged together. Even in a far remote place in the landscape, you can see the influence of mankind today. Just imagine the climate change, the global climate change, or the influx of air pollution around the world is influencing almost everything around us. So we're living in a world where man has an influence everywhere. That's why experts say we live in the age of mankind or the Anthropocene. 200 years ago, Alexander from Humboldt traveled around the world and he noticed how complex the system of life is. Actually, he said nature is a dynamic web of life. And he said Earth is a living organism. And I like this expression very much because we can still refer to this idea that Earth is a living organism with a lot of compartments mixed together, interconnected, communicating with each other. Now, the world was complex these 200 years ago, but it is even more complex right now. Since the Industrial Revolution, since our invention of new technologies, the world got even more complex. In Germany, for example, it's not just the Industrial Revolution that changed our environment dramatically, but this country was also influenced by two catastrophic, self-inflicted world wars. These world wars destroyed almost all the infrastructure in this country, and Germany had to reinvent itself several times. Transforming landscape, recovering landscape, creating new environments, rapidly changing, fast changing. Also, Germany is a very small country. It's surrounded by nine neighboring countries, so we have cultural diversity, and it's a country that ranges in the landscape from the mountains in the Alps to the lowlands and the edge of the ocean. So you might as well say Germany is a very nice case study area. It's comparatively small, but it's very vivid and very dynamic and in constant change. Now, how do we deal in landscape architecture with a changing landscape like this? That's a very important question because not only in Germany, people feel sometimes threatened by the rapidity of the change out there. They feel that they lose their sense of belonging. They feel that their home is at risk because landscapes are constantly changing. So we're in a difficult situation. On one hand, we have to make sure that landscape can change all the time because only a dynamic changing landscape is a living landscape. And on the other hand, we have to make sure that people find their orientation. We need to establish a certain kind of stability. Is there a way between these two parts? That's the difficult question. How can we achieve that? Now, there's a very interesting definition of what landscape is today by the American founder of the American Landscape Studies, John Brinkhoff Jackson. He came up a couple of decades ago with a very interesting, far-sighted definition of what landscape is today. He said, landscape is not a natural feature, but landscape is a synthetic space, a man-made system of spaces superimposed on the face of the land, functioning not according to natural laws, but to serve a community in all its needs. Why is this definition so far-sighted? For two aspects. Number one, John Brinkhoff Jackson totally denied the difference between natural elements and man-made elements. He says we have to take care of the totality of landscape. The second aspect is he talked about a system of spaces, landscape as a man-made system of spaces. Now, what does that mean? Well, just think about a rather simple system of spaces. For example, the house you're living in. This house is composed of several rooms and these rooms have certain functions, but the functions can change as a matter of fact. 
But what's important about that system of space is the fact that the rooms and the spaces are interconnected. Well, you know, think about the windows. You can look outside, you have a visual connection to the outside, or you need the doors between the spaces because you need to move from one space to another. Movement is essential for life in such a system. And there's another hidden structure that organizes the scapes. That's the structure that supplies energy, supplies water, supplies information to the rooms, to your house, and between the rooms. This is a network, a structure of communication, a structure system that makes sure that all these informations get communicated between the rooms. Now keep in mind when I'm talking about information or communication, I'm not only talking about verbal communication, but as I said, communication of matter, of energy and information. Now landscape, of course, is a lot more complex than a house, right? A landscape has many different spaces, but still, this structure I'm talking about, the structural landscape, in terms of communication, is extremely important for landscape. So, we have to make sure that the system of spaces in the landscape is composed in a way so that we have a network of communication systems stabilizing this whole uh, system of spaces. Landscape architecture in Germany was very much influenced by the experience of transformation. We have a lot of experience, not only at university, but also in the offices, about how to transform spaces. And we came to the conclusion that the structuralistic approach to landscape is a very interesting and intelligent approach because structuralistic approach means we make, we create structures that are possible to or able to grow and change over time. So the landscape, and that's important, can change its face without losing its face. This structuralistic approach we use in teaching and in research as well. So landscape architecture in the Anthropocene from my point of view, is about establishing a life-supporting spatial structure, is about establishing a communication network that makes this living being, Earth as a living being, remember Humboldt, to make this living being come alive. The structure has to be as stable as necessary and as flexible as possible because this living being of landscape needs both parts.